Welcome to the Motivational Midwife. My name is Lynn Jones, and today we're going to be looking at self care. So many of you will just be starting out on your degree uh, at this point in time and you will be full of enthusiasm and full of excitement, um, quite rightly so. But actually the realisation of the enormity of the degree you've just taken on will soon start to dawn on you and you can very quickly become very overwhelmed with the level of study that you need to do to complete your degree. So with that in mind, it's important to, to, to really think about those things that you can do that will help you along that journey, but also will really keep you sane while you're going through this journey. It, when you were uh, in those first few weeks at university, it's, it's quite uh, easy to be fairly focused, you haven't got really very many other distractions going on um, apart from your uni work um, and also you're full of enthusiasm and you really you can keep on top of things you want to get all of it done really quickly um, so that you're you're focused and you're really chomping at the bit to go once you go out into practice um, it becomes much more of a challenge to start juggling long shifts uh, long and very busy shifts often with your academic work and and also some some downtime and it, downtime is really important um, you don't really want to be spending all your downtime doing your academic work you need to factor in time for yourself if you have uh, children or partner um, then you also need to factor in time for your family. Um, it is important to have balance. Uh, and it, when you're doing a midwifery degree, it's very easy to find that you don't have balance, that everything is, it, it's just so full on. Um, and, and it is a very difficult degree to do. It is mean, you know, I don't let anyone else tell you otherwise, it is a difficult degree. Uh, one of my colleagues is a, is a big fan of Gantt charts, and if you haven't seen a Gantt chart, then just Google them. I think it's G-N-A-T-T, -T, Gantt charts. And essentially, they are uh, a grid which have days of the week down one side and times across the top. And then you fill that grid in, in those time slots, about what you're um, going to do in those times. And I would suggest that they're not a bad idea in terms of helping you stay focused, particularly if you find it quite difficult to organise yourself and organise your study time. Um, so you can block out the days you're on shift and you can uh, block out um, short periods of time in the other um, sectors to, to catch up with your academic work that you need to do. Um, I personally don't think it's a good idea to sit down and spend like one whole day just plowing through academic work because you you don't really retain it you 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 might well get the work done but you won't retain it it's better in my opinion to do short sharp bites of um academic work so you know do an hour have a break do another hour then put it down for the day um you know spend the afternoon doing something else something for you something you enjoy be that running or yoga or swimming or going out for a coffee with friends um, but you need to have some that balance um, and if you you have some organization around your study pattern you will find that it's much easier to keep on top of your academic work 
Um, Because as I say, while you're at uni in these first few weeks, it's relatively easy to keep on top of all of the academic work that gets fired at you in these first few weeks and months. Um, You are front loaded much more than any other course that I can think of. Even even nursing, you have much more front loading um, than many of the nursing courses. So that when you go out into practice, actually you are armed with the knowledge and the skills to really hit the floor running. It is important to have downtime, to have uh, time for yourself. Now, me me personally, I have several things that I I do. When I'm doing study, I'm a very visual learner. I'm a very hands-on visual learner, and I find it much more of a challenge to learn from um, particularly written online resources and, and books. I find it much easier to have a, a proper lecture where someone's in front of me and I can uh, it, I can be interactive and I can ask questions. And at this time of COVID, where things have been uh, less interactive, um, I know for a lot of people that has been much more of a challenge. Um, and so things I like to do when I'm um, having time for myself is I, I like to do yoga. My faith is very important to me and I find that that uh, also helps me keep a level head with my studies if I'm doing any study um, uh, or even when I'm not studying, when I'm trying to juggle work and the YouTube channel and uh, in my life outside of being a midwife, I'm also a holistic therapist and I have a, my own small business. So trying to juggle all of those things together, um, I like to have a nice bit of balance and certainly my faith can help me in that uh, respect keeps me balanced that's not for everybody but it is for me um yoga I like a bit of yoga I like uh, I find that I don't do as much as I should do um but uh, I enjoy that um and there are other um things that I that I do enjoy uh fitnessy type things that I, I do um participate in give me a break from both mentally and physically from um, clinical midwifery and also all the other bits that I have going on in my life. I think I've said it's important uh, to really factor time in for family and children when you are studying. It can be very easy to get very carried away with the study and the pressure of of, um, achieving deadlines um, that you find your your family and your children, um, particularly if you have um, small children, can seem to be pushed to one side, even if they're they're not. You you can feel that very often. I certainly uh, when I did my uh, general nurse training, I had and my midwifery uh, training. My children were small, and uh, I had guilty mother syndrome, like a lot of people uh, that with the uh, small children when they're training do you, you you constantly feel guilty that you're not there for them that you're not um, you're not being a good mum and that is a, a very common feeling if it is any help to you I mean my children are all grown up with children of their own now and I have spoken to them about this and and they don't recall me not being there um, which for me is very reassuring but I think then just goes to show that it's the quality of the time that you spend with your uh, children that is important as opposed to the quantity of time that you're there so sometimes I mean my my personal um, when I trained we did short shifts we didn't do 12-hour shifts and so at whatever point I came home in the routine of my children whether that was picking up from school or whether it was getting the tea ready or getting them ready for bed or whatever I took over the care from the minute I walked in the door and then I studied when they were in bed Uh, and I'm I'm not one of these people that can just pick up a book and learn it and uh, found it easy so I had to study pretty much every day uh, apart from when we had holidays then I, I did give myself that time down but I did do some study pretty much every evening even if it was just half an hour's reading Um, but I did it after the children went to bed so it was less of an imposition 
And that might work for you, it might not. You may find your own way, but the important thing is to actually have balance in what you're doing. So you need some time for your studies, some time for your family or friends if you if you haven't got uh, partners and small children, or children per se, and some time for yourself. And it is important to keep a balance between all of those things. Don't let one or other of them really... Um, take the forefront over the others. I will put some, uh, there is a podcast that I've done on uh, with a colleague of mine called Denise Cohen on mindfulness, and you may find that that's quite helpful. Uh, you may find meditation helpful, you may not, you may think it's a, a load of baloney. Um, you, relaxation, uh, therapies, if you, if you like um, therapies, then, you know, Treat yourself to a once a month massage. Um, often there are um, special offers going, so you can you can get some of these uh, little mini spa mornings for for not huge amounts of money, which can be quite quite nice. You could go with a friend. Uh, reading. Uh, lots of people find running or running uh, for me the words fun and run should never be in the same sentence but my sister runs and and loves it Ugh. Uh, I can't think of anything worse but uh, it, it works for her and she finds that that's her time her downtime she has good thinking time when she is running and she finds that very useful and very ther very therapeutic and so you might find that um, dancing listening to music reading whatever works for you just make sure you factor some time for yourself into your studying. So there you have it, a few of my thoughts on self-care and why it's important. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so, and I look forward to seeing you next time.